What? Who is this for? Happy place, happy place. Think about some happy place. Don't be so negative, Victor. Those who use container will gain. A while ago, I saw a video that caught my attention. It says that there are two types of people. Type A is a person or a team that writes lines and lines and lines of code or instructions. That is the type that uses complex syntax and it is managing critical environment. And the results for those types of people could be catastrophic. As you can see, the video is very over the top. And then there is a different type of people, different type of teams. And those are the teams that use a project called Portainer. Naturally, I wanted to use that project because, hey, who wouldn't want to avoid potentially catastrophic results? So I started using it. So what is Portainer? I'm not sure. We'll get there. But at least the marketing says that it is a container management tool or a platform for managing Docker, Docker Swarm, Kubernetes, and Azure Container Instances or ACI. Now, I have no idea why would anybody want a tool like that to manage Docker, because Docker today is a tool for local development environments for our laptops, not really for production and especially not for complex systems. Swarm is, how to put it, it's dead. Docker sold it because it has no future. Mirantis bought it only to squeeze a bit of money from uh, enterprise customers that Docker Swarm had. And Azure container instances are simple enough that I don't understand how could I improve that simplicity with anything, especially something like Portainer. And by the way, uh, ACI is a toy. It's not really anything that... Uh, can produce catastrophic results because it's not used for any serious system. So there are no catastrophic results, but there is Kubernetes over there. And I am always constantly looking for ways to simplify Kubernetes for those who are not really deep into it, right? I don't want to simplify Kubernetes necessarily for sysadmins and what's not, but I do want Kubernetes that is simpler for developers and other roles who do not spend every single day trying to figure out how Kubernetes works. So simplicity from the left-hand side of uh, roles is very welcome. I want that. So naturally, I spent time with Portainer and we are going to explore it together right now in 20 minutes or less. And then we are going to see whether it makes sense to use it. And if it does, in which cases it makes sense and how you could benefit from something like that. I already cloned the repo that has a few sample files that we will use. And I created Helm values file. I will not go through it again, but the gist with all the commands that I executed before this session and that I will be executing during this session is in a gist and gist, the link to the gist is in the description. So go there if you want to follow along. I will jump straight into installing Portainer into a Kubernetes cluster. It can run in any Kubernetes cluster, so that's all good. So it's Helm, upgrade, dash dash install, and then Portainer and portainer slash portainer is the chart and the namespace where should we run it portainer why not we should also create a namespace in case there isn't one and i have a few values that i will provide through values.yaml and let's wait until it is fully up and running it might take a few moments so i will fast forward to the end of the process there we are. So we'll copy the address that they provided and open it in a browser. Let's see what we'll get. Here we are. It doesn't work. I know why it doesn't work. I could easily guess why it doesn't work because I'm using Ingress and Ingress is enabled through the Helm chart provided by Portainer, but they never thought that anybody will, will use Ingress. So they put this silly 9000 port, which I don't need. Shame on you. So I'm asked for password. I will use password. Oh, it needs to be eight characters long. Very good. It's secure from the start. 
if that's security, right? I can choose which environment I want to use. I can use local Docker. I don't understand why would anybody do that. Nah, no sockets. No, no, definitely not. I can use agent. Uh, I don't know what it is. It doesn't really matter what matters. What I care about is Kubernetes. Can it really simplify management of my complex environments and avoid the disaster? That's the mission I have today, right? So connect. Okay, so we have some configuration options like do we want to allow users to use external load balancer? Uh, yes, why not? It should be. Uh, should they configure ingress controller? Of course I will. It will be nginx and uh, type is nginx. Brilliant. Okay, security. Restrict access to default namespace. What? This is silly. First of all, if I'm going to restrict access to anything, that would be anything but the default namespace. I might restrict access to production. I might restrict access to other, to cube system. Hey, cube system, if you want to restrict access to anything that's cube system, default namespace, that's the last namespace you want to restrict access to. And then you expect me to pay for that because that's a business edition. Okay, that's silly. Allow resources over commit. Yeah, I think that that's common. You should be. Uh, metric servers, server, uh, maybe not in a demo, doesn't really matter. And storage, yes, I want to have storage and I will, I want volume expansion, why not, right? Save configuration. And we are welcomed by latest news from Portainer that it now supports uh, something in Compose. Come on, I, I, why do I care about that? We are talking about Kubernetes here, right? So I can go to my cluster, I can have multiple clusters, I can see that I have five resource pools. What, what, what is a resource pool? I don't know. Let's see. Oh, that's a namespace. And by the way, yeah, okay. So I see only one namespace, the default one. I get uh, the other namespace is hidden because they're system resources. Okay, I, but I mean hidden, not available by default. I can still manage them. I can access cube system. I can probably do whatever I want in that cube system. Uh, anyway, so if this is avoiding disaster, then show. Then if this is about avoiding disaster, then please hide cube system, not default. Uh, not not default namespace. Anyways, dashboard. So I can see my applications, configurations, volume, what's or not. Okay, let's see resource pools. What is resource pool? That's just a silly name for the namespace. Why would you call a namespace resource pool? It's namespace. That's how it's called. That's the name. Okay, okay, Let, happy place, happy place. Think about some happy place. Don't be so negative, Victor. Okay, so I can have applications and I can choose to deploy an application. I have advanced deployment. Let's see what is advanced deployment. Come on. So Portainer is allowing us in an advanced mode to copy and paste manifests. Nobody should ever, ever, ever do that. That's just silly. You create manifests, you store them in a YAML file, you push them to Git, and then you apply them from there. You don't copy and paste manifests. Those who know how to write manifests will never apply manifests like that. And those who do not know how to write manifests should not be here in the first place. What, what, what would the person who doesn't know how to write manifests and store them in Git do here? Anyways, let's go back. The, uh, this is getting very silly. So I have applications, port mappings, and I have stacks. I don't know what the stack is, uh, but we will discover that. Let's go to applications and I can add the new application. Excellent. The name, DevOps Toolkit, image, vfarsic, DevOps Toolkit series. That's a silly image I have. Resource pool, uh, default. Uh, I cannot create a new one. Okay, so I must use default resource pool. Excellent. Uh, I probably should go to resource pools to create the namespace, but heck it, no. Uh, and the stack, I should probably create a stack here. Uh, I will not bother with that. Anyways, environment variables, configurations, persisting data. Uh, I can specify how much memory in CPU I want, uh, whether I want it replicated. Yes, let's create three replicas of it. Auto scaling, uh, metrics features must be enabled. They are actually enabled in my cluster. I do not know why you're telling me that they are not. Anyways, and placement referencing constraints. Uh, okay, whomever is using this doesn't probably know what the, those are, so it does not matter either. So, we can have publishing an application. It, it can be internal cluster or load balancing. You don't see it from my head. There it is, load balancer. I want to use load balancer uh, and publish ports. 
let's see, a port. I will publish port uh, 8080. Why not? Load balancer port. Uh, why are you asking me that? That's always 80 or 443. Uh, and I want to deploy the application. Let's see what will happen. So here's my application and uh, it is deploying somewhere. Now let me actually go back to the previous screen. This add application, create application option is kind of strange because it has too many things for some and too few things for others. So if I want real simplicity, I should be specifying the name and the image and most of the rest should not be even here because the system should figure it out. Hey, uh, should it uh, replicate? Should it have more than one instance? That's up to the system to decide. That's why we have projects like Knative that will scale automatically because if I don't know how to do those things, I do not want to see those things. Uh, most of those options are kind of silly for people who just want to deploy their applications. There, there should be just a name and image. Now, there are people who want more than that, absolutely. But I believe that they want more than this because this is not this is not nearly good enough for people who understand the systems for sysadmins and what's or not in summary this is too much for some too little for others i'm not sure okay let, let's discuss it at the end of uh, the video so i have my applications let me go back it is up and running i can go and see the details and uh, i have application i have placement i don't know what placement is uh, nobody knows yeah, which cluster it is running on, in which node it is running, events, and uh, those are Kubernetes events, and YAML, this is the YAML that comes from Kubernetes cluster. So this is not really a platform that helps me avoid terrible mistakes, it is a Kubernetes dashboard that uh, stripped away many of the things I need and put quite a few things that people who want speed and agility and what's or not and don't want to go into details do not need. Anyways, I can see some basic information over here and I can edit this application. Let's edit and I can change probably the tag, for example, of the image. One, two, two, three, four, right? And then I can click the save button, update application. Let's see what it does. Yes, it will cause interruption. It's not supposed to cause interruption because I scaled it up. You gave me the option to scale up the application to have multiple replicas precisely so that we avoid service interruption. Anyway, I'll skip the updating. You, you get the point. You can update things. You can create configurations. From what I can see, this is, this is essentially creating a config map. So this is my config map and the key is something something and the value is something else okay so this creates config maps this allows me to inspect the volumes i have so no volumes available uh, this is kind of silly i should be able to create a volume but uh, okay yeah i don't know what's going on here storage i have standard 10 gigabyte storage now again i have a problem that names are changed this is I assume, judging by what I see here and knowing what I know about my cluster, I can guess that storage means storage class and volumes are, yeah, volumes are volumes. And I can see my clusters over here. I have only one cluster, Minikube. I didn't want to waste too much money on my cluster. And uh, connection refused. That's absolutely not true. You just got the wrong connection. This is your problem container. It is absolutely not true that scheduler and container managers are unhealthy. You just don't know how to get to them. And then we can create users, RBAC roles, endpoints, registries. I can create Docker, I can add Docker registry or whichever registry I'm using. Docker Hub is actually the only one available out of the box, which is kind of silly because we already switched too much bigger fish uh, so far and settings. So that's all there is. I cannot imagine how this would allow me to avoid the disaster that is in the promotional video for Tainer. L let's go back to the full screen and discuss this thingy. For Tainer, I do not understand what is the additional value that it brings to the table. What does it give us so that we might consider using it? Is it yet another Kubernetes dashboard? Not really. It hides too many things that we might need and it exposes some things that people who do not understand systems 
will not understand either. It's somewhere in the middle. It's not for the uninitiated developer, but it is also not for a sysadmin, and it doesn't provide a service that is bulletproof. So I do not understand who is this for. Is it for those who understand Kubernetes? Absolutely not. Is it for those who just want to deploy their apps? It's not for them either because it's insufficient, not in a way that there are not enough fields, but simply that what it is doing in a background is not enough. If you want to see how that should look like, check out Google Cloud Run, for example. Google Cloud Run gives us that mechanism like, hey, Tell me your image and I will deploy it, but I will also scale it. I will connect it to logging mechanisms. I will monitor it. I will do a bunch of things for you. This is not doing anything for me. This is just a wrapper around Kubernetes based on the principles behind Docker. This is glorified dashboard for Docker Compose made to use Kubernetes. The initial statement that those who do not use Portainer could experience potentially catastrophic results is not true. I would say the other way around. Those who use Portainer will gain no benefit and might experience potentially catastrophic results. This was a huge waste of my time and I hope that I did not waste too much of your time. Do not use it. This is the first time probably that I'm saying ever, do not use this. Under any circumstance, it's a waste of my time, it's a waste of your time. I just hope that you wasted 20 minutes instead of a couple of days figuring it out. I promise that in the next video we will explore something that is more interesting and better investment of your time. This is not it. Thank you for watching. Subscribe, hit the like button, do all those things. See you next time. Cheers.